In this program, we're going to take a look at free radicals. And we're also going to take a look at their use in substitution reactions with alkanes. But first off, what's a free radical? Well, a free radical is a species that contains at least one unpaired electron. And they can come in three forms. They could be an atomic radical, molecular radical, or an ionic radical. Let's look at sort of examples of each. So let's say we have chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, so I'm going to draw its Lewis formula. So that would be it. Atomic chlorine is considered to be a free radical. With only seven valence electrons and one unpaired, they're highly reactive. Let's look at a molecular example. Um, CH3, which you've seen a lot in organic chemistry, it's methyl. So if we total up our electrons here, we have four from the carbon, three from the hydrogens. We have a total of seven electrons in this picture. So let's put carbon in the middle, three hydrogens. And the first place I'm going to put them is between the atoms to create a bond. So that's used up six, and the seventh I'll give to the central atom. Again, an unpaired electron. Finally, we can also have ionic species that are free radicals. My example here will be O2 negative. So we have six electrons from each of the oxygens plus one more, giving us 13 electrons in our Lewis formula. So I'll put two of them down. First two must go at the bonding site. So now we'll complete that one's octet. And this one, we're going to run short. We can only get up that far because it's an ion. I'm going to put it in square brackets with a negative sign. And there is an unpaired electron right there. Hence, we have a radical. So that's what they are. Now, how do we make them? I'm going to show you the most common method that these free radicals can be made. And it involves the use of UV light. We take UV light of a particular frequency, and it's capable of breaking that bond. Now, you might remember that line represents two electrons. So one electron goes over to this chlorine, and the second electron in the bond goes this way. It's important to here to use a hook or an arrow, which has only one barb or one direction on it, to indicate the movement of one electron. So the result then would be this chlorine has gained an electron and this chlorine now has an electron. So we have formed here our radicals. We can also accomplish this with heat. Again, at the right particular temperature, we can send an electron that way and an electron that way, resulting in two bromine radicals. This splitting of the bond and send the electrons one way and one the other way is called homolytic fission. Homo stands for same. Lytic is breaking. So we essentially have the same breaking. The atoms get equal amounts of electrons. Let's pause right now and see if we can determine which of the following is not a radical. So that means we're looking for something that does not have an unpaired electron. And the best way is to take a quick look at its Lewis formula. So fluorine, much like chlorine would have one unpaired, so it is definitely a radical. Um, OH, well, let's take a look at oxygen, hydrogen. There would be six plus one, seven electrons in the picture. First two go there and the remainder around the oxygen. Again, an unpaired electron, so that's definitely a radical. CH4 plus, so four electrons from the carbon, four electrons from the hydrogen. A plus one means we've lost one. We have only seven electrons in our picture. So if we were to draw that carbon with our four hydrogens, 
we would start at the bonding sites at six. We only have one left. There it is. We have an unbonded electron there. So that would also be considered a radical. And lastly, the nitrate ion. Well, five electrons from nitrogen, three times six for the oxygens, plus the one because of the charge, um, gives me a total of 24 electrons. So we begin with nitrogen in the middle. We'll put the three oxygens around it. First place I put them is the bonding sites. Let's complete some octets. Now at this point I've used up 22 of the 24 electrons. If I give the remainder to oxygen, it won't satisfy the nitrogen in the middle. So I'm going to have a double bond here, and that would give me the 24. And this has a minus one charge. All the atoms are satisfied, but I have no unpaired electrons. So this is not a radical. Let's take a look at now at what's called free radical substitution. To do that, I'm going to provide an example using structural formulas. Free radical substitutions require the presence of an alkane and usually a halogen. What will happen in a substitution reaction is one of the halogens and one of the hydrogens that's present in the hydrocarbon, they will exchange places. That exchange makes two products. One is a halogenoalkane, and the second, we tend to have hydrogen bonded to the halogen. Now this can continue. What I mean by that is we can continue substituting more and more of the hydrogens and adding more and more chlorines to the molecule. But I'm just going to keep it simple here and look at what's called mono substitution, where I make one substitution. Now, so substitution means we have this exchange with two products. Now, why free radical? Well, that comes down to the initiation step. This reaction takes place through a series of steps. And the very first step involves chlorine undergoing that homolytic fission, where one electron goes this way and one this way, creating chlorine radicals. Let's now follow the path of one of these chlorine radicals in what's called the propagation steps. So the chlorine radical now encounters a methane, which I'll show this way. When it collides with one of the hydrogens on a periphery, one of the electrons in this bond moves over here. So I'm going to use the single barbed arrow. That allows you now to create a bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine. So we now have Cl bonded to that hydrogen. We have left behind, though, one electron. So that carbon has one electron still at that location with our three hydrogens. So that's our second product. So what we have here is a radical making a radical. Let's now follow this radical in the next step in the reaction. So we'll bring it down here. There's the carbon with the three hydrogens and it collides now with another chlorine. One of the electrons from that bond makes its way over here. The other goes and joins the chlorine. So now what we've created is a chlorine radical here, and the Cl is now bonded to the carbon. 
are halogenol. Okay, so it's this step followed by this step. And since we've made this, we can return. So we can go right back up here again, and we can continue this cycle over and over and over. There are some collisions, however, that will bring things to an end. They're called termination steps. When two radicals collide, so by chance you could have a chlorine radical run into another chlorine radical, and it would form that. That would then get rid of the radicals in our mixture. We could also have a chlorine happen to run into one of our methyl radicals. And that would also bring the cycle to an end with chlorine now bonded to form a halogenoalkane. And here's the unexpected one. We could have this radical collide with this radical. And that would result in the production of a thane, an unexpected product in this reaction. And indeed, we do find small amounts of ethane, suggesting this is how the reaction proceeds. So free radical substitution involves a substitution, an exchange of atoms, but it occurs by what's called a free radical mechanism, which we see here in the initiation step. Let's see if we can identify which of these involves free radical mechanism. So the free radical mechanism would involve a halogen splitting. So it comes down to one of these two. Now, in a substitution reaction, what happens is we get an exchange between our alkane and our halogen. So one of the bromines would replace one of the um, hydrogens, resulting in this second product. So this is an example of a free radical substitution reaction.